Hello everyone, I'm Shankha Subra Sanyal. Well, I begin today's session by asking you a question. Has it ever happened to you that you wish to accomplish a goal and then uh, because of minor hiccups you wanted to quit? My dear children, remember the moment you are ready to quit is usually the moment right before when the miracle happens. You remember the story of Robert Bruce? Yes. So fall seven times, but make sure you stand up on the eighth time. Well, this is a session which is the fifth of the series. And here we're going to talk about the ways of increasing and decreasing friction. Why I say this? Because we have seen that friction is a necessary evil. It has advantages as well as disadvantages. So we need to increase as well as decrease friction to suit our needs. Along with that, we will also talk about drag, which is in case of fluids. So let's begin the session. In some cases, friction is useful to us. In such cases, we even want to increase friction to make it more useful to us. Friction can be increased by making the surface of an object rough. The surfaces of objects can be made rough in many ways depending on the situation where these objects are to be used. Before we discuss the methods of increasing friction, we should know the meaning of the terms groups and traits. A long and shallow cut or depression in the surface of a hard metal is called a groove. A series of patterns made into the surface of a tire to provide grip on the road is called a tread. If we observe the soles of our shoes, we will find that some grooves have been made in the soles by the makers of the shoe. The grooves are made in the soles of shoe to increase the friction with the ground or the flow so that the shoes get a better grip even on a slippery ground and we can walk safely without the risk of slipping. When our road is wet as during the rainy season, there is a layer of water on the roads. The presence of water on the surface of road reduces friction between the tires of the vehicle and the surface of road due to which tires lose their grip on the road. The reduced friction between tires and road increases the chances of skidding of the vehicle on the road, especially when brakes are applied suddenly. Due to this, it becomes difficult to control the running vehicle on a wet road. The trades on the surface of tires are des designed in such a way that they push away water from under the tire as the tire rolls over the wet road. When water is pushed away from the surface of road beneath the tire, friction between road and tire increases and improves the tire's grip on the wet road. The risk of skidding of a fast running vehicle is very much reduced. Thus, the traded tires of cars, buses, trucks, motorcycles, scooters, and bicycles provide better grip on the road, especially on wet and slippery road. The trades of tires do not help much in dry weather though. The players and athletes have to run very fast. So greater friction is required between the soles of their shoes and ground to prevent slipping. To increase friction, Spikes are provided in the soles of shoes worn by the players and athletes. Spikes are the pointed nails which get into the ground and increase friction between shoe and the ground. 
This prevents the slipping of the player or athlete while running fast. Gymnasts apply some coarse substance on their hands to increase friction for a better grip. Kabaddi players rub their hands with dry soil to increase friction and get a better grip of their opponent players so that they may not slip out of their hands. Machine belts are made of special materials to increase friction and drive the machine wheels properly. In many machines like flow mills, belts are used to drive wheels for running the machines. Greater friction is required between the belts and machine wheels so that the belts can drive the machine wheels properly without slipping off the wheels. To increase friction, the machine belts are made of special materials having rough surfaces as uh, rough surfaces increase friction. In some cases, friction is harmful to us. In such cases, we wish to reduce friction so as to make it less harmful to us. For example, friction between the moving parts of machines cause a lot of wear and tear to the machine parts. It also leads to the production of an undesirable heat and loss of energy, which in terms uh, of efficiency reduces it. So we should make efforts to reduce the friction or minimize it so as to prevent much damage. Friction can be reduced by a lot of methods. We are going to discuss few in the following slides. Friction can be reduced by making the surfaces smooth by polishing. We know that friction is due to the roughness of the surfaces. So, if we make the surfaces smooth by polishing, then friction will be reduced. For example, a slide in the park is polished to make its surface smooth and reduce friction. Due to reduced friction of a polished smooth slide, children can slide down easily. However, even highly polished objects look rough when seen through a microscope. So there is always some friction even on polished surfaces. Friction between two surfaces in contact with each other is due to the interlocking of uneven surfaces having irregularities on them. When oil or grease is applied between the moving parts of a machine, a thin layer of oil or grease is formed between the two rubbing surfaces. This layer of oil separates the two rubbing surfaces a little bit due to which their interlocking is reduced to a large extent. Since the application of oil or grease helps in avoiding interlocking between the two rubbing surfaces to a large extent, friction is reduced and movement becomes smooth. In fact, when oil or grease is applied to the moving parts of a machine, then their surfaces do not rub directly against each other. They rub through a layer of oil or grease which is very very smooth. The substances which reduce friction are called lubricants. Oil, grease, graphite and fine powder are lubricants. The applying of lubricants to a machine is called lubrication. A lubricant reduces friction by making the surfaces slide over each other smoothly. Thus, friction can be reduced by lubrication. Machines are lubricated with oil or grease to reduce friction. A well lubricated machine runs more smoothly and lasts longer. It's a common experience that you must have seen a bicycle mechanic and a motor mechanic uses grease between the moving parts of these machines to reduce friction and increase efficiency. Sometimes the hinges of door make rattling noise when we open or close the door due to increased friction caused by uh, rusting. 
when 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 a few drops of oil are poured on the hinges of a door the friction is reduced and the door opens smoothly without making any noise in fact we sprinkle fine powder as dry lubricant on the carom board to reduce friction we must note that though we can reduce friction we cannot make it zero even if the surfaces are highly polished or large amount of lubricants are applied so friction can never be entirely eliminated in some machines it may not be advisable to use oil as lubricants in such machines an air cushion between the moving parts is used to reduce friction for example the frictional drag from the sea on a hovercraft is redu reduced by a cushion of compressed air a vehicle or craft which travels over land or water on a cushion of air provided by a downward blast is called a hovercraft it is quite difficult to move a heavy suitcase by dragging it on the ground because the sliding friction uh, between the heavy suitcase and the ground is very large now if this heavy suitcase is fitted with small wheels called rollers then it can be pulled very easily this is because when we attach wheels then sliding friction is converted into rolling friction and rolling friction between the wheels of suitcase and the ground is much less thus friction can be reduced by attaching wheels or rollers to a heavy suitcase for any or for that reason any other heavy object which is to be moved due to very small rolling friction even a child can pull a heavy suitcase fitted with small wheels so from this discussion what we can conclude we can conclude that friction can be reduced by attaching wheels to move the objects so wheels are often used to reduce friction in fact all the moving vehicles like uh, bicycles cars buses and trucks are fitted with wheels to reduce friction with the road so that they can move smoothly before we move ahead with our discussion let us know what is a ball bearing ball bearings are designed to make the moving parts of a machine to roll over each other rather than slide the ball bearing is introduced between the two surfaces which have to rotate over each other for example the axle is fixed on the inner side of a ball bearing and wheel is fixed to the outer side of the uh, ball bearing the ball bearing reduces friction by making the two surfaces axle and wheel to roll over each other this happens due to the rolling action of small metal balls present inside the ball bearing uh, we just now discussed about the ball bearings right even a wheel produces some uh, some some motion where its central hole or hub rub with the axle to reduce friction still further wheels are mounted on ball bearings the ball bearings are fixed between the hub of wheel and axle when the wheel revolves the balls of ball bearing roll and reduce friction so the use of ball bearing makes the wheel roll smoothly over the axle since rolling friction is much smaller than the sliding friction sliding friction is replaced in most of the machines by rolling friction by using ball bearings thus in most of the machines friction is reduced by using ball bearing for example the wheels of a bicycle turn on the ball bearing these ball bearings reduce friction because they roll rather than slide before we describe fluid friction we should know the meaning of the term fluid those substances which are able to flow easily are called 
fluids. Fluids have no fixed shapes. Liquids and gases are fluids because they can flow easily. The most common liquid around us is water. So water is a fluid. The most common gas or mixture of gases around us is air. So air is also a fluid. Thus water and air are the most common fluids. There is a friction whenever an object moves through a fluid. It is called fluid friction. Air is very light and thin, yet it exerts a frictional force on objects moving through it, which opposes the motion of the object. When an object moves through the air, it pushes the air out of the way and air pushes back on the object. This push of air on the moving object creates friction, which tends to slow down the moving object. Thus, air exerts frictional force on cars, buses, aeroplanes, even rockets and birds moving through it. Similarly, water and other liquids also exert force of friction on objects which move through them and oppose their motion. When an object moves through water, it pushes the water out of the way and the water pushes back on the object. This push of water on the moving object creates friction which tends to slow down the moving object. Thus, water exerts frictional force on objects like boats, speedboats, ships, submarines and fish which move through it. From the ongoing discussion, we can conclude that air and water exert force of friction on objects moving through them. Since air and water are fluids, so, in general, we can say that fluids exert force of friction in objects moving through them. The frictional force exerted by a fluid, air or water, is called drag or drag force. Thus, drag is a kind of frictional force exerted by a fluid like air or water, which opposes the motion of an object through that fluid. Drag force acts in a direction opposite to the direction of motion of the object. So, drag slows down the object moving through the fluid and makes speeding up harder. Typical examples of drag forces are the air resistance force experienced by a car or an aeroplane when they move at high speeds and the water resistance force experienced by a speedboat moving rapidly in the sea. The magnitude of frictional force or drag exerted by a fluid on an object moving through it depends on four factors. Number one, the speed of the object. Number two, the shape of the object. The size of the object is the third one. And the fourth one is the nature of the fluid or viscosity of the fluid. Let us now discuss this one by one. Before we discuss how fluid friction can be reduced, we should know the meaning of the term streamlined or streamlined shape. A body shape which offers very little resistance to the flow of air or water around it is called streamlined or streamlined shape. A streamlined shape is like a thin wedge or a thin triangular object lying on its base and sloping upwards gradually. The fluid friction or drag can be reduced or minimized by giving special shape called streamlined shape to the objects which move through the fluid like air or water. When an object having a streamlined body shape moves very fast, then the fluid 
the air or water can flow past the moving object smoothly, reducing the fluid friction. For example, cars are built with streamlined body shape to reduce air resistance or drag caused by air. A car with streamlined shape moves through the air easily without facing much air resistance and hence consumes less petrol, very important, than the one which is having the same size, running at the same speed, but with a shape which gives it more resistance. Thus, petrol consumption is also dependent on the shape. More streamlined the shape of a car, less petrol it consumes. Another example that comes to my mind is that of an aeroplane. An aeroplane has a streamlined shape to reduce air friction that it encounters when flying at high speed through the sky. The shape of an aeroplane is something similar to that of a bird in flight. Both the aeroplane and the bird have a streamlined body in the middle, two thin wings on either side and a tail. The streamlined shape of an aeroplane has been built by scientists and engineers whereas the streamlined shape of a bird has evolved in nature. In fact, the scientist and engineer got the idea for making streamlined shapes of various moving bodies from the living things in nature like the birds and fish. The rockets are also built with streamlined shapes so that they encounter the minimum air resistance or drag due to air when they fly off at extremely high speed. So, from this we can conclude that cars, aeroplanes, rockets are streamlined to reduce the friction with the air which we call drag. Brings me to end of lecture number 5. Here we have seen uh, the methods by which we can increase as well as decrease friction to suit our needs. Well, by now I believe you all must be aware with my email ID. It's sanyal.shanka at the red gmail.com. My dear children, please do write to me. In case you have any queries, I would be really grateful to answer them. My dear children, stay blessed. Thank you.